OpenBB, I love it. Uh, <laughs> I've used the Bloomberg terminal before. I've been a trader and it costs $25,000 a year to use this and get this investment research. And you make all that free for everyone. Uh, <laughs> this is incredible. My parents are Portuguese. I was born in Switzerland. That's why like I have a French name. When I was young, like eight years old, I went back to ended up doing a bachelor in electrical and computer engineering, the, uh, a master in control systems at, at, at Imperial. And then I stayed there doing software engineer, learning Python and machine learning on my spare time. And yeah, that's a bit my background. So like nothing, nothing related with finance, really. The only true way to build like, you know, generational wealth is through investing. And I already, already had like a, you know, a couple of years of working experience. So I was like, you know, this is a good time for me to start learning about finance. And that's kind of where the old finance thing started first from these, these, uh, uh, writing the code behind the PhD thesis project, and then, uh, to, um, doing investment research on my own, basically using my own uh, capital to invest really nothing. There was nothing that allowed you to automate like your investment research as much as you wanted. And and furthermore, as I was interested on, on machine learning and AI, I wanted to really have access to the data and play with it. And it was a, 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 also another nightmare because I either had to find the perfect data provider that had all the data are needed, or there wasn't anything else. I had to, you know, I had to read the documentation of data provider X and then read of the another one Y, and then they had like some cross-correlated data. And then I would be like, you know, okay, which one, which one do I use now? And then if I want to look at a different asset class, the way to interact with the API is completely different. And that was really, really frustrating from a standpoint of view, of like having an engineering first approach. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where the, like the old pain point started. I'm gonna build like solution that solved this problem to me. And so I started like building it on that first week and I got so excited about it. I kept building on it like for the next two months and I had a full-time job. And so it would, it was really hectic at the time. Uh, I even remember like, you know, my girlfriend at the time, my wife, uh, that she was like, uh, kind of sad in a, in a way that we didn't do anything. Cause I was just so ha like happy about what I was building and so excited about seeing it coming together. And then, um, and then one day I did the same as I did my past open source project, which is I, I just posted it on LinkedIn. The thing is I learned so much from people on Reddit that we started watching a movie and I said like, you know, I'm going to put this on open source and now I'm going to chill a bit. We started watching a movie and then I was like, oh, I want to post it also on on on, uh, on Reddit because I learned from these people and they, they might find this interesting. And this was like on a random Thursday evening. I didn't even think much about it, you know, and I and I put it on Reddit. And then we went viral. We went viral on, on Reddit. Uh, and then someone mentioned, put it on Acre News. We went viral on Acre News. And then Vice Magazine did a, a post about this like the next day or something like that. And so none of this was like planned, you know? It was like all very like natural. And I didn't, even the code, you can see the first commits, like that code was not prepared to scale at all. Like like literally at all, even like the pip install, you know, that you are used to with the requirements of the, the TXD. It didn't even have all the package because like, I didn't fully test it. I was like, you know, this is for me. I'm going to improve it over time. But there's not like a, a, a high bar because it's only for me right now. And it turns out that like more people were in the same situation that I was. And they were actually like keen on not just, you know, saying, oh, this is cool. I'm on the same boat as you. But I want to, you know, add a pull request. I want to create like a, a feature request. I want to join a group where, where we can steer the direction of the project. And uh, yeah, so that's how I kind of, Came into this old like you know OSS ecosystem first. Um, yeah, I wake up and this person added the pull request to add the full forex menu, and for me that was really impactful because first it was like a full asset class that we didn't have and I never trade. I never traded forex, so it was like a full new different asset class that I never traded. And it was someone that wasn't even on Discord, and this person just liked the tool, was interested to using it for, for his equity research, but he was also looking into Forex. So he felt like, you know, I want both of these uh, uh, worlds in, in one place. And I mean, that's, I think when I was like, you know, this, this can be huge, you know, what we are building is actually like, can be a, a generational product, you know? Um, yeah, that was like, and we kept on, on cheap, we kept on building, the group kept on, uh, on increasing. There was like a lot of PRs and most of the team we have today actually came from those times, which is like, Super exciting. And when, you know, OSS uh, Capital uh, talked with us about uh, raising a round to, to build the company, I was like, so you're telling me that I get to do the same I do today, but I don't have a, a nine to five job and I get to put all the time and I can hire the people that already work with it on a spare time. I was like, where do I sign? Do you know what I mean? Exactly. That's 
That's like a dream story, you know. Can't can't <laughs> get any better if you were to make a novel about it. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And at that point, uh, probably your role, your job, your everyday life, it, it became you know it changed, right? Or did it? How how did you navigate this? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So when when we raised, um, quite a few things changed. Um, so. One, well, one of the things, first of all, I had like a, a three three month notice period because uh, that's like the, the rules in, in Europe. So we, for the next three months, it was like, I was kind of in this situation where I was like, is this actually going to happen? Is this like real? You know, like it just felt like surreal that we were getting funding and I would go from being a sister fusion engineer to actually like, you know, leading a company. But like as, as the time went by, I started like getting more motivated and, and uh, uh, started talking with the people that were uh, uh, building the um, the project already on open source capacity. I started talking with them about like, you know, we are building actually a company around this. We're going to get uh, like a designer. We're going to have uh, people that are more focused on the product. We're going to have like a financial department and things like that. And it started getting like more material. And um, it almost felt like, the nine to five time that I was spending on uh, uh, on uh, working for another company, he started. Uh, I started spending it in terms of like creating a company, and my spare time was still on on building. But like the nine to five became of okay, how are we gonna make a company? And also, I've never at that point read books like you know, I don't know the I Growth Handbook from from Elad Gill or 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 uh, uh, Naval Ravikant's books and like books that help you be better like CEO or even how to manage a company. So I had a lot of catch up to do. So. I've been doing that for you know the past like now almost two years because I was so like uh, not into this world before that I had a lot to catch up on if I wanted to do a good job uh, at leading a company and uh, yeah that time was a lot about like learning uh, you know talking with people that knew about this and so that I could learn from their experiences and uh, yeah it was a lot of fun though like, we we're trying to build like a multi-billion dollar company and so we try to do every step that would make us closer to to achieve that goal like building the product we learned like now a suit of like three products uh each for their like use case but we're really trying to build like an ecosystem where they can interact like very well together for for investment research and now that you know we've been like almost like um yeah when when you're an alpha into this we're starting to think about okay now now we need to to start thinking about like uh, the commercial journey uh this product that we're thinking about is the open bb terminal pro and what what the commercial journey would look like what uh, what type of monetization do we expect and the reason why we're monetizing is just not for the sake of monetization is because that allows us to reinvest that capital into building a better open source product and that's why the the open bb terminal pro is actually going to be uh based off the open source open bb sdk which means that you know the community will get pretty much all of the advantage of the, the the core of the open source platform and all the data access endpoints it's just that the the pro solution is going to be like let's say a more professional take for 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 small to to medium enterprise with like more collaborative features like you know api keys management uh, like more security and that those are kind of like you know more professional features but you can still leverage pretty much everything the same on the terminal application that we have available today OpenBB terminal, it's free to use. The SDK is available for everyone. And then recently you released the OpenBB bot, right? Where on yeah. Discord, I can get alerts, I can get investment analysis, research, everything I need. So tell yeah. us about this. And this is free as well. Yeah, so um, so that one is actually a, a kind of a, a, was a very early on strategic take that we don't want just to build like an application. We actually want to build like the infrastructure for investment research. And for that, we need to build an ecosystem. Platform. So for us, the OpenBB bot as is the strategic thing is to have the OpenBB bot to be like a, a, an extension of what the OpenBB terminal is capable of. And because the bot is agnostic to the, the, the UI, because it relies on like this common interface, you, we can deploy it, you know, on Telegram, uh, on uh, uh, Discord, on Slack, and, and any other chatting, chatting platform. What I do like to track is the, the, the PR opening and the comment from the OpenBB team. And that comment, could be anything. That comment could be from saying, we are reviewing this right now and we're going to integrate it like as soon as it's ready. Or it could be, this doesn't align with our roadmap currently. We don't have the resources to work on this, but we will look into this in the next one, two months. Sorry for the delay, you know? But that's really important. Is is more important the transparency that you have with the community than actually the decision because then they when they understand and and because we are really like transparent or at least I'd like to think that that's how the community perceives us. Um, we can say what we are working on right now and this is why your PR won't come in right now.
I love what you said earlier about both, you know, the employees of the company, the contributors, the community having this this space to follow their impulses and run experiments with the with the product. And you, you don't see that in closed source. Uh, so Not at all. It just doesn't happen. And so that is the the huge superpower right there. A good advice to share is something that, like, this is a journey. So you have to be comfortable with sometimes taking the wrong decisions, but Honestly, from my experience, like making wrong decisions fast is always better than holding out too long to make a decision. Um, because also the, the a good thing about the open source is that you are able to iterate faster and that allows you to be, build a better product in a, in a faster period of time rather than, you know, just closing the, the, the scenes and working on it in one year and then you release and then you're like, you know, I, I expect this to be perfect. But like, if it doesn't, is in the end of the customers like you don't really know or users in this case you don't really know what's what's gonna happen um yeah one thing that i also like learned is that at the start like we didn't really have advisors uh at open bb and i thought that you know i could learn everything by just reading a lot of books because those books have like condensed information um it's not really like that when you start getting good advisors you actually start learning that you know the, the amount of value that they bring like to one, like one hour session can be quite substantial. You know, Loki, what is it like having, you know, as advisors and investors, like billionaires, has it kind of like blown your mind with what it's like? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, honestly, I mean, it's crazy going from like listening, for instance, Naval in podcast to talking with, with him and having him like, you know, as an angel. For me, it was like, I, I did a tattoo the next day. I think I've never told that, that story before. I did a unicorn tattoo the day after Naval uh, uh, said that he would like, uh, uh, you know, join our round because I was so excited. I had that I had that call. It was like 3 a.m. I think London time. And I was so excited. I even woke up my wife and she had worked the next day or something. And uh, um yeah, because this is like it's just surreal. You know what I mean? Like it's just like you see that like these people and you put them on the pedestal. And then when you talk with them, they are actually just humble people. They talk with you. They don't talk with like from a pretentious place nor anything. And that's one of the things that I think that most of us think of when you think about like these people that are you know celebrities or you look up to you always think about them like you know like untouchable but they are like human beings and they are nice people they actually care about the same things that you care they just have like a much broader exposure and uh, uh, they are seen more more than you are so they get more scrutinized sometimes or more like you know put uh, on, a, on a pedestal but yeah that's been like a fascinating journey i would say and speaking with you today, I think we'll be able to say the exact same thing in the future. Someone asked me. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs>